You guys hear me talk about buyer intent all the time, and I wanna break down buyer intent a little bit further for you guys so we're able to sort of understand what I mean by that theory and break it down into more of like a tactical approach of, of kind of how it works. So if you guys are running your own marketing funnels or you're working with a um, professional that's helping you do that, what I wanna to do today is just kind of give you guys some, some tips and tricks on how to move your buyer intent up and down based on your marketing campaigns. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna explain what is buyer intent, okay? Just for those of you that haven't heard me very much before, buyer intent is how you measure the intent of the buyer when they fill out a lead. In insurance, this is very important. There's a far big difference between raising your hand and being interested in something versus I'm shopping for that something, for instance, life insurance. So let's just say hypothetically, somebody goes through a life change and all of a sudden they start shopping for life insurance or their wife experiences a de death in the family and all of a sudden the wife is like, honey, you need life insurance right away. Well, where do we go to look for that um, life insurance? We go to Google, obviously. Well, the first thing we're gonna do is probably look for a warm network, like uh, someone in our network to be able to work a referral with. But the second place, if we don't have that person, is gonna be Google, I promise you, that's where they go. So the buyer intent for the individual that's looking on Google for a life insurance policy and getting quotes is far different than the individual that's just responding to an ad because we kind of put something in front of them for them to respond to on social media. That's measured by buyer intent. So what I'm gonna do is we like to break down buyer intent on a 10 scale. We got one buyer intent to 10, all right? Now, a one buyer intent is get me on the front porch as cheap as possible, I don't care. So in the final expense insurance game, it's basically get me as many leads as possible uh, with my budget. So on like a $1,500 a month budget, you're looking at probably getting like 150 leads, 160 leads with that budget, uh, whatever that looks like. Um, as opposed to a 10 out of 10 is a, I don't care how many leads I get, I only wanna talk to these specific people. So typically that's with a more higher end product, you have a more higher end shopper, you don't wanna waste your time, you're a more developed um, insurance agent, financial planner, et cetera, where you really don't wanna waste your time with people with no money. Um, because you don't really want to take the time to weed through those leads to find the people with money. That's totally cool. That's just basically a 10 out of 10 buyer intent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of break down like how we do this, okay? So in the first, like let's just say it's one out of 10 buyer intent. Typically what I'll do is I'll use social media um, exclusively for this campaign. Um, and what I mean by that is I'll use Facebook, Instagram, and we will put together some t sort of ad copy that is a, a little ambiguous um, in terms of exactly what we're, we're doing. We're just basically just trying to solicit a response um, from that individual as, as, in as inexpensively as possible while being compliant as well. So that's like a one out of 10, right? So your lead cost, you know, I've, I've done Medicare campaigns that are $1.75, you know what I mean? Like $1.75, just get me as many leads as you can. Um, but the buyer intent and the contact rate is usually lower. We won't, we won't ask a qualifying question, et cetera. Now, as you move up the scale, there are certain things you can do to add buyer intent. Uh, what I've done is I've kind of found a sweet spot. Um, if you're, a, if you're a, um, an insurance salesperson, like for instance, Medicare, recruiting, final expense, um, you know, any other type of, of insurance really, I've kind of found this sweet spot to be about right here. Okay, so this would be a two, three, four, five on the buyer intent scale. The reason I like the four on a buyer intent scale is because I'm not making the jump to do like a landing page uh, tactic with a marketing funnel where we have to build out the asset, shoot the video, and qualify the lead before I even get to it. But I am asking qualifying questions, I am using specific language to make sure that it's specific when these individuals are opting into life insurance policy uh, quote or information, we're using that type of language, we're not saying anything like there's a benefit update in your area, that type of thing. We're saying things like life insurance, using that word specifically. So that campaign is higher buyer intent because you're not gonna hear that person uh, on a four out of five say, oh, I thought this was free. Who are you? I thought this was free. But on the one out of 10, you may get that. I thought this was free because we're driving the cheapest lead possible to get you to hit your numbers. Typically, this is like starting agents where I just want as many people as I can, which is interesting if you think about it because a lot of people sell aged leads for about $2. So these are specifically custom campaigns of people raising their hands for less than two bucks typically. And you can't usually get aged leads for less than that. I mean, you can, you can find sellers for aged leads. I'm not gonna say you can't, but typically that's about around the price of aged leads. This four out of five buyer intent is a really sweet spot because that gives us enough buyer intent to have a decent close rate in our meetings. You don't hear things like I thought this was free and your closing rate ends up being um, you know, relatively higher than what you would be as if you were at a four out of one. So what I like to say on this buyer intent, um, typically, let's just take final expense for instance. 
Every 20 appointments that you, I'm sorry, 20 leads that you generate, okay, you should have eight appointments set. Six of those appointments should sit. And then two to four, um, some, some people, you know, can get five or six. And I have had people do 100% close rates on, you know, for a month straight, but usually it's not going to be 100%, obviously. So two to four closes. All right, this is what I would expect at about a four out of 10. On this uh, one out of 10, I would expect a less contact rate. I would expect you know far less. So what I've found is, is that there's kind of a sweet spot. I try and stay away from as cheap as leads as possible. And I also try to stay away from like, you know, driving whatever it takes cost leads for people because typically that person doesn't stay with the campaign for, for much longer than the first you know several months because they're like, well, but I'm paying 40 bucks a lead and you know I don't really know if it's worth it. Yeah, whatever. So. Um, that's one of the things that I love to kind of like, you know, start here. But the best part about um, marketing with the right partner is, you know, instead of like, you know, buying leads from a lead vendor, and, and what will happen is, is all these different lead vendors will have their marketing funnels set up and they'll be placed, you know, here or here or here or here or whatever. And so what will happen is, is you'll try this lead vendor out. And you'll be like, no, 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 I don't like that lead. I wanna to go to this lead vendor. No, 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 I don't like that vendor. I like this lead vendor. Then they'll go to this lead vendor. You know, and you'll bounce around. When really all you have to do is work with one specific marketing partner that understands buyer intent and how to ma manipulate that buyer intent based on ad copy, asset, product, et cetera. And if you start at a four and you're like, you know what? I need cheaper leads. Well, let's bring it down. Let's look at the numbers. Let's go here instead, right? Or, you know what? I'm at the top, tippy top scale of income. I'm still not talking to who I want to talk to. So let's just get it all the way up towards past like a six buyer intent right now. This is a whole another ball game. All right. When you are, you know, north of, of six on a buyer intent scale, most likely we're going to move to what's called like a landing page uh, tactics where we're no longer trying to drive leads on specific, um, you know, social media platforms. We're going straight to a landing page and driving traffic to a landing page. We're using Google, we're using Facebook, most likely Google, to drive traffic into the landing page to then have them convert in the form of a lead. All right, so this is your landing page that you have, blah, 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 and, doo -doo, doo -doo, and then you got your content here. Boom, okay. So this is traffic, video, content. You know, here's a lead form right here. You know, this is a lead. Now, this is a whole other ball of wax because you gotta pay to build the asset, you gotta pay to build the marketing funnel out, and then that traffic is um, what we're gonna use to pay Google or Facebook or Instagram or earn it through SEO or whatever to drive that traffic into our marketing funnel. So if we end up with um, a landing page, let me kind of explain why this gets kind of expensive, but for the right person, it's, it's awesome, right? So let's just say Google wants you to have at least $100 a day. I mean, I don't know, a day is ideal, but at least $1,000 a month of spend. Okay, so a thousand dollars a month of spend. Now, there's a lot of keywords that we're going to be buying for anywhere from six to nine dollars per click. Now, notice what I said: click, not lead. So I'm paying six to nine dollars per click. Let's just round it up and say I'm paying ten dollars per click, just for the sake of math, per click. And let's say my landing page has a 25% conversion rate, which is high. I'd be shooting for like a 15 to 20% conversion rate on average. Um, depends on the campaign, depends on the traffic, but that's a good safe estimate. So let's just say I had 25% conversion rate, $10 a click. That means it would cost me how much per lead, right? If I'm sending $10 per clicks, so I got four clicks to get one lead. That means I'm paying $40 a lead. Now, that's okay if I'm certain if I'm doing disability insurance or long-term care insurance or, um, you know, some you know IULs or annuities or higher-end products because we don't care about paying forty dollars a lead because those leads are ours, unique leads. They were shopping for the keyword that we want. We're driving them to the landing page and we're getting the lead that way. Um, you can also do mortgage protection that way um, because Facebook is kind of neutering our capabilities to target who we want to on Facebook and Instagram these days. The main purpose of this video is for you to understand that basically from here to here is essentially social media right now. And this is as of August of 2019. I fully expect this to change and move as things go. But this is basically Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. You know, we're trying to basically solicit an, uh, a call to action for these individuals. And then really anything from here, you know, here's like a combo of the two. And then this is all Google, right? So this is Google. 
and then you got to build a landing page and you got to drive traffic, et cetera. So a lot of people are like, I understand what you're saying about buyer intent, but like that doesn't really make fully a, a, like a lot of sense to me exactly. Well, this is how we break it down. We basically say, where do you want to be on your buyer intent? But what really matters to us at the end of the day is the metric that we call, you know, cost per acquisition, CPA, right? Cost per acquisition is the most important number that we can go after. That means how much did it cost us per client? It's like I work with the Medicare call center right now that does you know, this Medicare all across the nation. They've got a massive budget and their cost per acquisition right now is I think $120 per uh, Medicare client. Now we're working to get that below $100. We're on our way to do that. There's still plenty of optimizations to get to. My point is, is that their cost per acquisition is 120 bucks, right? So I can't remember exactly where they're at on the buyer intent scale, but I don't want to not, not only do I, I don't really want to air out their laundry anyways, but this is the most important number. So the buyer intent scale is just like a number that we use to kind of communicate how much intent the buyer should have. And the buyer intent is going to help you under, understand how much the lead is going to cost. Because the game of digital marketing in the insurance industry is not all about buying as cheap as leads as possible for um, as much budget as possible. That's not the game really. The game is finding a you, a buyer intent that meets your business to help you find what's called equilibrium, which is enough leads in your pipeline at enough closing rate to pay for the whole thing. That's the key. So it, you, typically every geo, every business, every product has a different sort of mix of this, but it's our job to help you kind of find that mix. So just to give you a breakdown of how this would work, um, if you had $1,500 a month of budget, 500 of this would go to security agent marketing for management fee, $1,000 would go to actual ad spend, we would develop our cost per acquisition and we would scale from there. So that's how you start. So you really don't need a lot of budget to get that done. Um, and if you're already paying that for leads anyways, wouldn't it be nice to not have to bounce from lead vendor to lead vendor to lead vendor to lead vendor and feel like people are constantly over promising under delivering because they're not lifting up the curtain to explain what the heck they're doing. I wanna show you the ad copy, I wanna show you why we're running it the same way, I wanna pivot for you. Um, that's what we wanna do in terms of relationships with secure agent marketing. Nothing wrong with lead vendors, we are one. We're one of the largest digital marketing lead vendors in the country with secure agent leads. So if what you want is a batch of leads, we'd love to help you with that too. But I'm looking for those people on the marketing side that are willing to have a consistent set up um, marketing campaign that we can adjust the buyer intent together and then scale accordingly. So thank you guys for taking your time to kind of watch through this. I appreciate your time very much. Have a great day.